In this video, we'll be comparing different approaches for performing thermal analysis, focusing primarily on the tools within SOLIDWORKS Simulation and SOLIDWORKS Flow Simulation. Thermal analysis in general allows us to define heat sources and other conditions to predict whether a device will overheat or how long it takes to warm up or cool down. SOLIDWORKS Simulation is a finite element analysis, or FEA, package. And the SOLIDWORKS Simulation Professional license includes the capability for a thermal analysis. Let's take a look at this. Here I have a SOLIDWORKS assembly of an electronics board with a couple different chips and a mounted heatsink. I have my SOLIDWORKS Simulation add-in loaded, and I have a thermal study already created here. Heat sources are defined on the various heat generating components. And we have the appropriate solid material properties defined to each body. This heat will automatically conduct through any initially touching faces, but once it reaches the exterior faces of the heatsink or the board, there's nowhere for that heat to go by default. This is why we've specified a convection coefficient here on the external faces. And a convection coefficient is a value that could be used in a thermal hand calculation to represent how much heat gets dissipated to the surrounding fluid, the air in this case. So we need to look up this value from literature or measure it from an experimental result. And it has a very wide possible range that will directly affect our results. So it's a potential source of a significant amount of error. Once we have it set up though, we can create the mesh and run the analysis to take a look at our results. Here you can see a 3D plot of surface temperature over all our components. SOLIDWORKS Flow Simulation is a computational fluid dynamics, or CFD, tool built right into SOLIDWORKS. And although it has dedicated add-on modules specifically for electronics cooling and the HVAC industries, in this video we'll be looking at just the base functionality of flow simulation which still includes thermal analysis and is sufficient for analyzing many problems, electronics cooling or otherwise. One of the most clear ways to illustrate the differences between the two tools would be to look at a passively cooled device in alternate orientations. In SOLIDWORKS simulation, we'd expect nearly identical thermal results in both of these orientations, because any orientation effects would need to be represented by modifying the convection coefficient that we input to the software. SOLIDWORKS flow simulation, on the other hand, would automatically incorporate the effects of rotating our passively cooled component. This is because in SOLIDWORKS flow simulation, the convection coefficient is calculated as an output. Looking at a setup of this analysis in SOLIDWORKS flow simulation would look very similar to what we saw in SOLIDWORKS simulation FEA. We'd have the solid materials defined, heat sources for the various components, but the main difference is we'd have the computational domain, which represents a volume of air around our model, and the heat will be transferred to the air by convection automatically. SOLIDWORKS flow simulation can also handle much more complex geometries, such as the rack mount server we see here, which has hundreds of individual components. This is in part thanks to its meshing technology, which doesn't require meshing all the individual faces of the model explicitly like SOLIDWORKS simulation. This problem features forced convection, represented by a series of internal fans. The fan definition in SOLIDWORKS flow simulation allows the input of a fan curve or what might be known as a static pressure curve, similar to what you'd find on a data sheet from a fan manufacturer. The combined fluid flow and thermal effects are solved simultaneously, removing any guesswork about convection coefficients. It also captures other effects that would be lost in the thermal FEA-based approach, such as the air heating up as it passes the first heat sink, generating higher temperatures in the second one. The software also accommodates liquid cooling by supporting isolated regions of different fluids. In this case, we can simulate a liquid cooling loop while still representing the airflow over the other components. Looking back at things, we'd recommend SOLIDWORKS Simulation Professional for simple problems that are dominated by conduction or radiative heat transfer. Remember that in this tool, analyzing things like changing the device orientation or mounting a fan to it would need to be accomplished exclusively through modification of the convection coefficient. 
SolidWorks Flow Simulation, on the other hand, incorporates all these effects automatically. Since this behavior is crucial to predicting accurate results for so many thermal problems, it's really our default recommendation for a general purpose thermal analysis tool. Another product to quickly discuss is Simulia CST Studio, which is a suite of standalone tools that could be helpful for anyone on the electrical engineering or ECAD side. CST is known for its capability to solve radio frequency and electromagnetic problems, but it also has a capable thermal solver with its own embedded CFD. It allows simulating problems where the thermal and electrical behavior are closely related thanks to bidirectional coupling between the thermal and electromagnetic analysis. So hopefully you found this video helpful, and please let us know if you have questions or would like further information on any of these products.